It has been a really rough year for fans of Dungeons & Dragons and role-playing games. Sometimes it feels like we just can't catch a break. Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast, the owners of D&D, seem like they're intent on tanking the franchise. Trust has been at an all-time low, but there has been one thing we have all been able to rely on, something that we can all agree is great. And that is, of course, the return of worms into pop culture. Sorry, I mean, I mean Baldur's Gate. 3. Baldur's Gate 3. That's that's what I meant. This is the Dungeons & Dragons video game that shook the world. In a year of nothing but steel maggoty bread, Baldur's Gate 3 was a delicious mouthful of man flesh. A breakout success not only for Dungeons & Dragons, but also Larian Studios, the indie game developers behind it. However, unfortunately, I bring bad news. Because Larian have just announced that Baldur's Gate 3 is cancelled. It's over. Larian have declared that the content well is dry, and that while the game will get a few more patches and updates here and there, there'll be no more DLC, no expansion packs, and no new content. Hell, there won't even be a sequel. Larian are dropping Baldur's Gate altogether and returning it back to Hasbro. This is pretty rough news, but it's just the beginning, because as unimaginable as it may seem, this story somehow gets even worse. And the internet reaction to all this has been extremely, uh, passionate. It's been very passionate, to say the least. These are rough times. Did someone do a Command & Conquer on this timeline? Are we in a Command & Conquer timeline? Now Sven, the head of Larian Studios, announced the bombshell that Baldur's Gate will be getting no more DLC, sequels, or content just a few days ago at the GDC, and immediately the internet went to work, speculating as to why Larian would do this, considering what a massive smash success that the game has been. And just what this means for the future of Baldur's Gate and for Dungeons and Dragons. And this is the part where it gets really terrifying. I mean, not quite as terrifying as people in your YouTube comment section getting your home address from shitty data brokers online. Take it from me, that one is truly terrifying. And that's why I'm so happy that today's video is sponsored by Aura, because your information is exposed on the internet, ready to be accessed by scammers, spammers, and mad dungeon masters seeking dire retribution. Many people don't know this, but there is an entire industry of data brokers online who take your information and sell it on to the highest bidder. That's why all those supposed Nigerian princes keep hitting up your inbox looking for money. And you keep getting spam calls about mysterious ghost packages packages that just never seem to arrive unless you give them your credit card details. Spooky. Even worse, your name, your email address, home address, health records, all of this information is online and ready to be exploited by bad actors. But thanks to Aura, you can fight back. Aura comb the internet to identify all your details and make sure that it gets removed, ensuring your privacy and safety in an increasingly hostile internet. But that's not all. Aura also provide a VPN service. Hello, Texas. Password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, antivirus, and more. All in one convenient app at an affordable price. So check it out at aura.com slash dungeons to start your two-week free trial. It's also linked below in the description. Get your internet survival tools and support the channel. And a massive thanks to Aura for sponsoring today's video. Now, as for why Larian Studios have dropped Baldur's Gate, for my own money, I can't help but think that perhaps Hasbro firing almost all the Wizards of the Coast employees that Larian worked with when making Baldur's Gate 3 might have something to do with it. After all, at the GDC last year, Sven made an impassioned speech about how greed and quarterly profits have, quote, fucked up video games. He said, quote, the only thing that matters are the numbers, and then you fire everybody. And then next year you say, Fuck. I'm out of developers. And then you start hiring people again, and then you do acquisitions, and then you put them in the same loop again. That loop he's talking about, by the way, yeah, that literally happened in December with Wizards of the Coast. Everyone Larian Studios worked with to make Baldur's Gate 3 got fired by Hasbro. And then Swen actually tweeted about how awful that all was. This was back in December, by the way, which was probably around the time that Larian 
Criterion Studios were deciding whether to go ahead with a Baldur's Gate sequel or not. I'm just saying, we got the means, we got the motive, we got the murder. And by the way, this is all old news to regular viewers of the channel, so be sure to subscribe to keep up with these sorts of things. So yeah, the math checks out. Larry and hate corporate layoffs, Hasbro do corporate layoffs. This seems like a little bit of an own goal for Hasbro then. Now, Sven did clarify that Wizards of the Coast, WotC, aren't to blame for Larian taking a different direction with what they want to do going forward. He tweeted that WotC were a great licensor, but it wasn't WotC that fired all those folk at... <laughs> Watsi back in December. It was Hasbro, the Eddie Arcadian to Watsi's show enough. They are the ultimate controller of the D&D IP, and they are the ones who would have been setting out all the guidelines and details of Larian Studios' relationship with the D&D IP. And let me tell you, Sven doesn't mention jack shit about Hasbro. Now, when Larian were asked why they won't be going forward with Baldur's Gate 3 anymore, Sven did say that the devs actually did start working working on DLC for the game, and they even had begun planning out Baldur's Gate 4, but their heart just wasn't in it, and so as a studio, they would just prefer to move forward with new projects outside of the D&D brand. Which makes sense if they feel constrained by Hasbro and working within the D&D brand and D&D mechanics. Now I have to say, personally, I have a ton of respect for Larian moving on if that's what they're truly passionate about, because it's that passion that made Baldur's Baldur's Gate 3 so great in the first place. It wasn't just a perfunctory project designed to be monetized, it was a real work of love and passion and art, and whatever game they go on to next will probably be all the better for that passion. I just so happen to hope that it's Divinity Dragon Commander 2. Come on, that was a sick game. You got an airship and you were a dragon? The shit writes itself. Now, the internet has been a little bit more uh, vitriolic in their response though. There's a ton of disappointment and anger at Larian online, but, 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 overall, I gotta say, it does seem like the news has gone down surprisingly well. The vast majority of commenters that I have seen have broadly been respectful of Larian's decision to walk away from Dungeons and Dragons. It seems like integrity actually gets respect out there, which is a little bit of a surprise to me. Maybe I don't have to wear the ham suit anymore. Personally, when I first read this news, I expected to see a lot more tear emojis out there. That, that, that's what that emoji means, right? Right? If it doesn't mean tears, then why do people keep spamming it at me? Speaking of which, that brings us to the big problem that D&D fans, role players, gamers, and even Hasbro Wizards now face in the wake of this announcement. And it's going to change everything. I think we should all be a little bit worried because since the release of Baldur's Gate 3, Hasbro Wizards have been bragging about the money that it has made for them in licensing fees. They just can't help but mention it in shareholder reports, press releases, letters home to their grandma, basically to anyone that'll listen. In fact, it was pretty much one of the main reasons that Wizards of the Coast managed to turn a profit recently. Yes, people at WotC were fired last year even though they made a profit. That's business! And in fairness to Hasbro Wizards, they are actually making an absolute fortune from the licensing of Baldur's Gate 3. As of February, it had made them over $90 million. And according to Hasbro CEO Chris Cox, they've made more money from Baldur's Gate than 10 years worth of D&D movies. And we all know how successful D&D movies have been historically. Sure, it's a whole lot of pennies. Ignore the fact that there was exactly 11 years between the release of the last D&D movie and the one before that. So really, it made more money than the D&D movie. That, that's all you had to say, Chris. So then, if there's no more Baldur's Gate 3 from Larian, there's no more DLC, no more Baldur's Gate 4 coming down the pipeline, well, I guess that means no more licensing money for Hasbro. And in a company like Hasbro, where even if you perform well, you get fired. I'm worried about what's going to happen to Wizards of the Coast when profit inevitably drops next year. Especially considering that Hasbro Wizards seem to be laboring under the impression that their future and the future of Dungeons and Dragons still lies in digital gaming. It's all they talk about. They're obsessed with the future of Dungeons and Dragons being digital. So how are they going to square that with Baldur's Gate now being off the menu? That's a pretty sizable loss in their headline roster of digital games consisting of uh, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 and 
Monopoly Go, I guess? Cross off Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, th that list isn't very big anymore, is it? That said, Hasbro still retained the rights to Baldur's Gate. I mean, they own it. They licensed it out to Larian Studios. They even own my very own Dark Urge gnome, Fuzzy Dunlops. They'll have to take Fuzzy from my cold dead hands. And even on the back of this announcement from Larian Studios, Chris Cox, CEO, has promised one to two new digital games every year from 2026 to 2030. Yay! So what's going to happen to Carlac, Asterion, Shadowheart, Fuzzy and the gang? Well, the only other digital game that Hasbro really loved to brag about, the other game that often gets mentioned in the same breath as Baldur's Gate 3 in all their stock reports, the one that actually gets named is Monopoly Go. This is a game that made Hasbro a billion dollars in 2023. Let me say that again. A billion dollars. And it does that with a predatory business model targeted at children and compulsive spenders. I've played this thing. It's just an app of flashing lights. Constant dice rolls where you just keep pressing a button and then you get to pay real life monies for more rolls of a dice. It's just a casino for children and that's where things get really bad for us because in a lot of ways Baldur's Gate 3 was an anomaly. I mean it shouldn't have been but in today's corporate world a game that is given enough time to be worked on, a budget to work on it and a full creative team given the space to lovingly bring it into the world without a ton of microtransactions and live service features to say nothing of the fact that everyone that worked on it still have their job, that's incredibly rare. And to be perfectly honest, I don't trust Hasbro to deliver it ever again. A Baldur's Gate Go mobile game app though? I bet we see that in no time. I mean, how else are they going to do two games a year from 2026 to 2030? I mean, Baldur's Gate 3 took like 10 years to make. And while Sven has tweeted that he thinks WotC understand how important that Baldur's Gate 3 and its characters are to the community and that they'll be treated with respect, I'm not so sure that Hasbro know the meaning of the word respect. I have no doubt that we'll see Gale turning tricks on the corners of Waterdeep by the end of the year. And if you want to keep up with that, then why not subscribe to the channel? If you want a free game and bonus videos and reviews of RPGs and war games and ad free content and join me on live streams and even help support the channel, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash discourse miniatures and thank you thank you to all my patrons you're the only reason i'm able to keep this content coming especially you crypto thank you very much and i'll catch y'all next time Bye bye